if you were doing great on your pelvic floor program with your pelvic floor exercises, symptoms were better, everything was going well, maybe you ditched the meds, maybe you ditched the pads, maybe you were back to running, exercising, feeling good, and then all of a sudden your symptoms returned, this video is for you. My name is Brittany Cappiello, and I'm a pelvic floor physical therapist, owner of my online pelvic floor company, My Core Floor. And I want to chat a little bit today about flare-ups and reoccurrences of pelvic floor symptoms. I've had a few clients this week who have reached out to me or clients that I work with one-on-one -on -one in person who have chatted with me about these reoccurrences and how they're super frustrated because they thought they were cured, quote unquote, and things were going really well. And so they sort of got out of habit a little bit with the exercises or they were doing them, but more on a maintenance level. And then all of a sudden out of the blue, they started to deal with incontinence again and they started to have bladder leaks again, or they started dribbling. I had one woman, woman who told me she was getting ready to get in the shower, hadn't peed first, and all of a sudden pee was coming down her leg. And she was like, what the heck, it's been months, and I've been really good, I've been doing my program, and now here I am again. And so I wanna talk about a few things. Why does this happen? Because unfortunately, no one tells us this, but the pelvic floor journey is not just linear. It doesn't sort of curve up and just keep going up and stay good, right? The pelvic floor journey tends to be a little more like this, unfortunately, right? There's a lot of different factors that influence our pelvic floor and our symptoms and what's going on. And so I want you to think about these couple things that can impact your pelvic floor and might be reasons for a flare-up in symptoms. And as I talked with some of these women recently, these are things that came up. So if you are normally doing a regular exercise routine, maybe in addition to your pelvic floor work, um, maybe you got into it after your pelvic floor work, you were sort of doing better. So you started running again, walking again, doing some stretching, whatever it is, yoga class. If you get out of routine with your normal physical activity, okay, whether that's your recreational activity, whether it's changes at work, maybe you um, typically move around a lot at work and then all of a sudden you have a week where you're stuck in conferences and you're sitting all week at work and you're not able to sort of get up and move the way you normally do. Any sort of changes in your movement patterns or your movement habits can definitely cause you to backslide because why? Because that pelvis needs to move to stimulate those pelvic floor muscles. And if your body gets into a good routine of movement and then that's stopped for whatever reason, Maybe it's travel. Maybe you sat on an airplane for too long. Maybe you drove in the car for too long. Like I said, maybe you're at conferences. Maybe you were traveling for kids' sports games. That tends to be my downfall. Um, traveling to games, sitting on bleachers, uh, whatever it might be. I had a client who had to work from home because she was exposed to somebody with COVID. So she was back um, working at home, didn't have a regular desk chair, didn't have a regular desk, was trying to do some work at a countertop with a stool. And so her whole environment had changed. And so she said just everything she does when she works from home versus at work is different. So I want you to first think about movement. When you have a flare up, often there could be a change. The other thing that can play into it is have you had any other injuries or irritations, things going on? Maybe you have a blister on your foot and you've been walking a little funky. Maybe you twisted your ankle. Maybe your back's been bothering you a little bit. Any sort of change in not only your amount of movement, movement, but how you move can also directly impact your pelvic floor and how it functions. Other things to think about, um, diet, hormones, uh, where you are sort of in your monthly cycle. If you're somebody who's perimenopausal, maybe heading towards menopause, um, could there be fluctuations in your hormones happening that are causing this shift or this relapse in your incontinence or pelvic floor symptoms? Uh, what is your stress level like? Okay, stress has a huge impact on your pelvic floor. They're muscles. So think about when you get really stressed and you start to feel it in your neck and you sort of feel like your shoulders are in your ears. Okay, your pelvic floor is a group of muscles. Stress will cause them to tighten. Tightening causes them to weaken. It can cause a flare-up of symptoms. Other things to consider are also how you're sleeping. Um, lack of sleep uh, goes right along with increased stress and can definitely impact how your whole body feels, how your muscles feel, how you're moving, uh, as well as how your pelvic floor is functioning. So just things to remember, the pelvic floor journey is not just sort of this upslope. It's not even sort of like, oh, I'm here and now it's just sort of linear, I'm staying really good. It can be, but more often than not for most women I find is it's a little bit of an up and down. You may be great for months, you might be great for years, might be great for weeks, and then there could be something that sets you back. And so try not to get frustrated with that setback. I know it, it's hard, it's easy to say that. 
Um, but I can say it because I also live in that boat. I have a prolapse. I've lived with it for uh, about 15 years at this point. I have to sort of manage it just like you have to manage your pelvic floor symptoms. So I know that it can be frustrating, but life is not just this straight journey where we can always expect everything. So just know that sometimes all of those unexpected other things going on in your life, sickness is another one, um, not only changes in your routine from you know being exposed to sickness and maybe having to work at home, but also sickness yourself. Um, where do we want to go when we don't feel well? We want to sort of curl up, right? Um, and that will sort of lock up and stiffen things up. So sickness happens. Life happens, travel happens, changes in our environment happen, life gets busy, stress happens, we don't sleep well at times. All of those factors can play into your pelvic health, so I just want you to remember that. Don't get frustrated by these flare-ups, just get back at your routine. The best thing you can do is when you start to notice this flare-up coming on is to get back to whatever was working before and doing it more consistently. So a little bit every day. So think about brushing your teeth. You brush your teeth for two minutes in the morning, two minutes at night, it maintains your dental health. When you're having flare-ups and things are starting to sort of go down a little bit, what you wanna do is you wanna get consistent and you wanna show up for yourself every day. It might just be a couple exercises, but doing a little bit of something every day to sort of keep the blood flow, keep things activating in your pelvic floor, get it strong again, get it turning back on, can really help to make a difference. Now, if you're sick, you might not be able to do that, and that's okay. Just cut yourself some slack, let your body heal, get better, and then as soon as you get better, get back on it. So it's not that you have to do more in the sense of more time or duration or intensity of the pelvic floor work you were doing, but consistency. Show up for yourself a little bit every day. It's also the best way to sort of keep or minimize, keep those flare-ups from happening or minimize them, is to just do a little bit every day. That's the strategy that I use and have found that it really helps me to manage my symptoms pretty well. I'm perimenopausal. I know I'm sort of heading in that direction. My hormones are changing. I do have a prolapse that I've had for years. So I know that if I do a little bit every day, it sort of helps keep things relatively in balance. The fluctuations may happen, but they're a little bit less sort of daunting and I can sort of keep them in check a little bit better. So showing up for yourself a couple minutes a day, it matters and it goes a long way. I promise. I uh, hope that helps. And let's minimize those flare-ups. Other questions, comments, reach out if you're looking for exercises. Make sure you check out some of the other videos uh, in the My Core Floor channel to learn about what kind of exercises are best to help your pelvic floor and minimize those flare-ups and bladder leaks. Take care.